Welcome to the famous north shore of Oahu in the Hawaiian Islands, where winter swells rock its beautiful beaches. However, this winter has been an exception. The world's best bodyboarders competing in this year's Mori Bodyboards World Championship have had a variety of conditions to compete in. The early rounds saw northerly swell directions forcing a move to Ehukai Beach Park from traditional Bonsai Pipeline. And then a storm moved in, creating a delay because the waves were too big to even compete in. And now, finally, the Pacific has cleaned up and the contest has moved back to the pipeline where the finals of the Mori Bodyboards World Championship are taking place. And it's taking place right here on ESPN. Welcome to the North Shore of Oahu in the Hawaiian Islands for the 13th running of the Mori Bodyboards World Championship. Todd Harris along with professional bodyboarder Jay Reel. And Jay, the pipeline is usually known for big pounding surf this year. We haven't got it. A far cry from the gargantuous waves of last year. Surf in about the three to four foot range. We had a little bit bigger surf earlier. And now the surf switching more out of the northerly direction. So we have a rip running through the lineup. But we do have northeasterly trade winds. So that's keeping the conditions pretty clean. And the smaller waves are opening things up for other riders. And those other riders will have to contend with names like Ben Severson and eight-time world champion Mike Stewart. But we've already had some big names drop out of the competition. Yeah, the wave is, wasn't what I like. I was hoping that it was bigger, but wasn't. And uh, I used a different strategy. Uh, I was looking more for backdoor because the hit before, the waves wasn't come that consistent. And the, on my hit, the waves came and I didn't get any good wave. And uh, the other two guys, Lance and Ben, they got good waves and they deserve. I, I couldn't get any good ones. Just had to be in the right place at the right time and uh, I feel obviously I wasn't. Um, it's different out there. It's not really, like in my heat there was a lot of north and the current was pushing you back door. And now these later heats after my, look like there's more, looks like there's a little bit more west to it and it, there seems to be more people catching better left than right. As in my heat, the lefts were just all shutting down and the majority of the waves that were caught were right. As we said, the conditions at Pipe are less than stellar. What are the judges going to do about it? Well, the judges are looking for mainly the biggest wave. They're looking for the most radical maneuver, but more importantly here at Pipeline, it's always the tube ride. The guys are going to have to get the deep tubes, come out, launch the big maneuvers, and I think in the final you're going to see something really radical, really new. Okay, we are set for the 13th running of the Mori Bodyboards World Championship here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Before we get to the finals, we want to show you some of the quarterfinal highlights. Conditions for the quarterfinals were smaller than what Pipeline is internationally known for. For the older pros, it was obviously a slight disappointment. But without the intimidating surf, the younger, newer competitors could now concentrate solely on competition. In quarterfinal number one, competition included David Ballard, Chris Burkhart, Leo Gomes, and veteran Mike Stewart. This event belonged to Stewart for eight years in a row. And during the past two years, however, the world title has eluded him. During quarter number one, Mike took one step closer to retaking the title, advancing on to the semifinals. Pulling off the highest wave count of the quarterfinal was David Ballard. Dave's two last waves paid off as the points pulled him past third place Chris Burkhardt and Mike Stewart by a mere half point. Quarterfinal number two competition included Fabio Aquino and Brian Press and two newer competitors, Joey Vieira and George DiMarino. George competing here in his second pipeline competition. Last year, George could not survive the competition, but this year the job was a little easier. The contest was outrageously big and I pretty much got cleaned up. And this year, it's a little bit more to my standards, basically, what I'm, my experience level. So that's why I'm, I'm here today. <laughs> Part of the largest US mainland contingent ever in the history of this event was Brian Press from California. Brian outscored the rest with the help of the Heat's highest scoring wave, an 8.0. Well, you know, a few of us started coming over here a couple years ago, and it's just this is the place to be if you want to make, make a career in bodyboarding. The North Shore of Oahu is the place to be. 
Quarterfinal number three included veterans Ben Severson, Harry Antipal, and Lanson Ronquillo, and newcomer Daniel Roca from Brazil competing here in his first Mori event. Some call him Little Guilherme after the defending champion from Brazil. While Daniel feels a little uneasy about this comparison right now, he is honored to qualify and compete with some of the sport's top pros. I'm very stoked about that. Uh, I feel very, very good because I am the only Brazilian now in the contest. I'm in the semi-final. I'm very stoked. For Ben Severson, winner of quarterfinal number three, the search for that perfect tube ride continued to be his plan of attack. With classic pipe conditions out of reach, Ben had to settle for more of the high-scoring maneuvers instead. Quarterfinal number four included veteran Brian Wise and advancing newcomers Douglas Lindsay, Carlos Rivera, and Ben Holland, who won the Australian title last year. Many predicted that Holland would advance on to the final. After winning quarterfinal number four, he was on his way. Also advancing to the semis was second place Brian Wise, whose consistent scoring and high wave count gave him the edge over third place Douglas Lindsay. We'll be back with the semifinal highlights right after this. This event is brought to you by Mori Bodyboards, bodyboarding technology from the people who invented the sport. Welcome back to world famous Bonsai Pipeline in the 13th run of the Mori Bodyboards World Championship. Todd Harris along with professional bodyboarder Jay Reel and Jay, semifinal number one was really stacked with a lot of talent. A host of hot riders in semi number one. We saw David Ballard from Australia, recognized as one of the top riders from down under, specializes in the drop knee stance. George DiMarino from Carlsbad, California, one of the young, hot, up-and-coming Californians, does really well on the Maury National Tour. Ben Severson, a perennial favorite, as I mentioned earlier, here at Pipeline, won this event back in 1986. And Brian Wise from San Clemente, California, also a top contender on the Maury National Tour, and he has been excelling in free surfing performances throughout the winter. All right, have a look at semi-final number one. The semi-finalists advanced out of the quarterfinals like this. The win super strong it's hard to stay in this one spot so um, I was getting dragged down the beach the rights are kind of better They're, they don't have the rip going through it and then I lost my fin about halfway through the heat and that kind of threw my rhythm off so if I make it through I'll be I'll be pretty stoked winning semi one was Brian Wise of San Clemente California at 20 years of age Brian has established himself as one of the top dogs in the sport and growing up in slop surf must have helped I just feel like success came from uh, practicing a lot of pipe and a lot of lucky waves came through my last semi, so I don't know. I was, I was practicing bigger waves, Jay, but you know, today is a little bit smaller, so I guess I'm good in small waves from being from California and surfing two foot slop most of my life. Semi-final number two of the Maury Bodyboards World Championship was like semi-final number one in that it was loaded with talent. But Jay, the name that really jumps out of you in this one is Mike Stewart. Without a doubt, eight-time champion of this event, Mike Stewart is the unquestionable favorite here today. And with his contenders out of the way, he has a really good shot at taking back his crown. Also, Brian Press from San Pedro, California, a standout on the Maury National Tour, his first time having success here at the pipe. Daniel Roca, following in the footsteps of Guilherme Tamaga, who won this event last year, is looking hot out here, the lone Brazilian. And Ben Holland, the lone Australian, carrying the flag for his country. He specializes in air maneuvers. All right, let's have a look at semi-final number two. 
Semi-final two saw the winners of quarters two and four, Brian Press and Ben Holland, go up against second place finishers Mike Stewart and Daniel Roca from quarters one and three. Finishing semi two and fourth was Brazilian Daniel Roca. Roca resembles Guilherme Tamaga in many ways, but this year it was Roca who made the semis and not Tamaga. Coming in third in semi two was Californian Brian Press. Press is always a strong competitor no matter what the event, but advancing to the final was not in the cards for Brian. The big surprise in Semi 2 was seeing Mike Stewart, the undisputed king of the pipeline, eight time world bodyboard champion, finishing in second position. Mike put in, as usual, a fine performance, but Pipe Today was not its usual self. Uh, you know, it's contestable. There's a couple bowls here and there, back door starting to open up. Um, but it's not your classic pipeline that you normally see on a good day or anything. Winning semi two was the lone Aussie, Ben Holland. Who is this guy, you ask? Ben is one of the top ranked bodyboarders on the Australian tour, and it's definitely no wonder when maneuvers like this are second nature for this guy. No, I wasn't really thinking of the other competitors, like I was sure Mike's a main contestant in that, in that heat, but um, I tried to block it out and just do what I do best and just get as many waves as I can. It was like paddling around, there's more rights and lefts, so I stuck on into the left side of pipe so I could get the right before anyone else, so I was happy. Back with the finals right after this. ESPN welcomes you back to the island of Oahu in the Hawaiian Islands. I'm Todd Harris along with Jay Real. We are set for the finals of the 13th annual Mori Bodyboards World Championship. And Jay, this one's really a tough one to call because you've got all kinds of talent out there. Todd, interestingly enough, we have two veterans and two young up-and-coming riders. The two veterans out there, the first obviously the favorite out here today, eight-time champion of this event, Mike Stewart. He hasn't won this event in two years. He is starving for victory here today. The other one, Ben Severson, won the event back in 1986. Always surfs well at the pipe, and he will be giving Mike Stewart a challenge for the veterans. And the two upstarts, Brian Wise from San Clemente, California, his first final here at the pipe. He made it to the semis in some big surf last year, and he's proven that he can do it in the small stuff here this year. And our other young up-and-comer, Ben Holland from Australia, his first final as well. First time in the event, and he's trying to pick up where Epo left off a couple years ago. All right, so it's two Hawaiians, one Californian, and an Australian in the finals of the Mori Bodyboards World Championship. Let's go to the water. If Las Vegas had a line on this competition, there would be your best bet, Mike Stewart, the eight-time champion here. But Stewart will have company as our competitors make their way out into the lineup. Let's go back and talk to the man who got this whole thing going a while ago. That's Tom Mori. Well, when you read about various people having revelations, I can believe it because the boogie board, body board, whatever you want to call it, is a revelation. I'd be walking down after I made the first one and was in attempting to produce a better product with better lines. I was walking down the street one day and a series of photographs hit me like, you know, like broadcast from someplace. And I could see the shapes that they could be. I could see what it might be. But I had had no concept that it would be as good as it is. I was satisfied that we could feel the wave. I was into flexibility in the board to be able to feel the wave and then just to be able to get some angle and thinking about filling the spot between the air mattress, which was a poorly designed surfing device, and the surfboard. So I was pleased to get some of the first tracks and I was the first champion, you know, until I started selling them to somebody. <laughs> Tom Moore ain't living in those glory years, but he had some huge contributions to the sport, Jay. Oh, no question about it. The man invented the sport that we're seeing here today. It's gone so far, and here today at the Pipeline, we're seeing the world's best. And up and riding on this first wave, Ben Holland catapulting into the lip. Beautiful Rolo comes down to the inside section, launching a nice air on the inside, and coming down, floats it off the whitewater, coming down across the sandbar section now. Nicely done reverse, and a forward spin, a bit of bumpy water through there and he ducks out the back so a fine wave for the young Australian. So Ben Holland picks up the first wave of the final. Let's go back and have a look at this Jay. 
And you can see at the opening part of the ride, nice roll -o, and he got a little bit of air on that one as well, so a high scoring opening maneuver. Next up, it will be Brian Wise from San Clemente, California. And Wise, one of the standouts on the Maury National Tour, quickly in and out of that right-hander. They're looking for the long, open face waves, perhaps a tube here and there to get the high scores top. As we remember back a few years ago, the waves were just enormous, but they've come down quite a bit for this competition. And next up again, it will be Ben Holland. And Holland, spin at the takeoff, driving in the inside racetrack section, launches a rollo, and it is really shallow over that backdoor reef, Todd. Definitely perilous on these smaller waves. So Ben Holland gets two waves right off the bat, and here he is, Mike Stewart. The man himself trying hard to win back the crown. He hasn't had it in a couple years, and he can very well do it with barrels like that. Comes out with a reverse. He's using his U.S. Tour training to milk these small waves for maximum points. So Mike Stewart, the technician, works this wave, and as we get a good look at the water shot, he gets a great barrel ride, a very long barrel ride. And talking to Mike before the final, he gave us his strategy on what he'd have to do to win back his crown. Well, I think, you know, I'm going to really have to go for it in this, this heat. You know, Ben Holland's busting out some pretty neat stuff. Um, you know, I got Brian Wise and Ben Searson's a veteran, so it's not going to be an easy heat. <laughs> and longtime champion Mike Stewart has his work cut out for him. And he's got competitors like Ben Severson vying for the crown again. Nice spin into roll combination at backdoor. And he claims that one, throws the hand up in the air. Ben Severson claiming it. He won this event back in 1986. He'd love to win again. There you see Severson's score. He gets a 5.5 for his first wave. All of our competitors now have a wave under their belt with Ben Holland from Australia having two very strong waves. So the two Bens and the second of those two, Ben Holland, the young Australian, pulls into a barrel at back door, throws the reverse out on the shoulder quickly in and out of that one. And young Ben Holland having a shot in his first ever world championship. We'll be back to the Bonsai Pipeline right after this. Welcome back to Hawaii in the Bonsai Pipeline for the 13th running of the Mori Bodyboard World Championship. Todd Harris along with Jay Reel. There you see our current standings, and right now it is Ben Holland, Jay, but he's got a lot of competition still out in the water. Well, plenty of time left in this final round, and things can change as we've seen in years past, no doubt about it. And the rights and the lefts happening out here today. We mentioned Northerly Pipe, Ben Severson taking up. Oh, and look at this thing setting up across the inside reef at back door, and he pulls in. Oh, can he come? Yes, he gets flung out of that barrel by a piston of white water, throws the cutback, claims it. And just an incredible wave for Severson. He could have a shot at winning this event after all. Ben Severson racking up the points, and he picks up a perfect 10 for that ride, Jay. Todd, you can't get any better than this at the pipeline. Severson pulls into that cathedral chamber of water and gets ejected, a perfect ride. And now Brian Wise from San Clemente on the outside having a look at this one. We haven't had a Californian in the final for a while. And there you see Mike Stewart taking a look at it. He lets it go, and it's going to be Brian Wise. Wise rolls at the takeoff, dropping over bouncy section. He stalls it, trying to find a cover-up, anything close to what Severson just had. Another rollo for Wise, driving to the inside. Banks a reverse off the oncoming section. So Wise packs in a few solid maneuvers, perhaps his best wave of the final. And Ben Holland picking off yet another clean-looking left. And this Aussie is known for getting air, and there you saw a nice air roll into a snappy reverse spin. Now a flat spot to get through. He's going to kick his way to the inside. Meanwhile, on the outside, Mike Stewart driving off the bottom, launching hang time on that rollo. Comes around and launches over the whitewater, trying to pick up this inside wedge on the sandbar, and rolls through that one. So a huge outside maneuver and a couple of good inside maneuvers for Mike Stewart. Mike Stewart going absolutely ballistic on that wave, and most guys would give up at that point, but Mike Stewart continued to pump it out. Here you see Ben Holland's wave, a lot of clean maneuvers on there, but I don't think it was as good as Mike Stewart's 9.5. Well, I mentioned he specializes in air. We saw it there, and Stewart just delays the timing on that rollo and makes it look smooth and beautiful. As we see here, he just lands perfectly smoothly in the flats. There you see Ben Holland, the 93 Australian champ, but he is stoked to be here at the pipe. It's just unbelievable, you know, speechless. Um, I've been thinking of this moment for a long, long time, and like I said before, when I seen Epo 
seen him in, with the um, trophy, like being first in the world. And just to be in the final of the world title is just great. And for the first time I've been in this contest, it's even better. So I'm, I'm stoked. Now take a look at the outside. Stewart pulls in, back doors a section, drives out of that tube. So another tube right for Stewart on a sizable set wave. Air reverse, incredible maneuver for Mike Stewart. So he has two incredible waves under his belt. Mike Stewart starting to gain momentum. Meanwhile, Mr. 10, Ben Severson up on another wave. Well, can he ever match that perfect 10? Rollo spin into another Rollo, so a great wave here for Severson. He ducks out, he doesn't get the length of ride, but he did manage to get off a couple solid outside moves. Time is winding down. Next up, it will be Brian Wise. Oh, spectacular ARS on the outside for Brian Wise. A last minute shot here, air roll spin. Comes to the inside, what can he do with this? Cut back into the forward spin, and that is a signature move for Brian Wise. Well, the clock in the judges tower shows just enough time for about two more rides. Ben Severson trying to close the gap on Mike Stewart. He's got a nice looking left. And he stalls in that barrel, pops out, and hammers a nice rollo off the oncoming Whitewater section. Will this be enough to close the gap on Mike Stewart? Severson finishing up this wave nicely. And he leaves Mike Stewart out there, and Mike Stewart is eyeing probably the last wave of the competition. And Stewart wants to sew this one up. He hasn't won the title in two years. Oh, pulls in the barrel, comes out with the rollo, and kind of a slow motion roll there, but I think that could be just enough. That will wrap it up. It is now in the judges' hands. Congratulations, however, to great performances from Ben Holland, Brian Wise, Mike Stewart, and Ben Severson. We will have the official results right after this. Stay with us. This event is brought to you by Mori Bodyboards, bodyboarding technology from the people who invented the sport. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 13th running of the Maury Bodyboards World Championship. Todd Harris along with Jay Reel. And just moments ago, this was the scene amidst the Hawaiian liquid sunshine as we go down our final standings. It was Ben Holland from Australia taking fourth, Brian Wise in third, and in second place, it was Hawaii's own Ben Severson with the title going to Mike Stewart. The eight-time world champion now becomes the nine-time world champion and Mike Stewart did it with a variety of tricks. Conditions at the pipeline were less than optimum, but that is a sign of a true champion. Mike Stewart was able to pull off all kinds of maneuvers in pipeline that is less than desirable. Let's go down to my partner, Jay Reel, who is standing by with this year's champion. Jay? I'm with the winner of the 1995 Maury World Bodyboarding Championships. He's won it eight times before. He's regained his title. Mike Stewart, incredible performance today. How do you, how do you feel? Uh, it's hard to just you know put in words. I'm going through a really wild set of emotions and feelings. It's ecstasy, you know, and I'm really stoked. Yeah, I trained um, harder for this event than I had in, I think, any other event. You know, just across the board, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, just trying to get all geared up and focused on this one event. And it's really tough, you know, there's some really hot talent out there like Ben Holland and when Ben Searson turns on, he's hard to beat, so, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, all the preparation and, and uh, once, it's, once it uh, happens and, you know, the heat happens and you win, it's like, you know, all the hard work paid off. Well, speaking of a hard work paying off, Lisa Miller here, uh, who's been your girlfriend for nearly a decade, has tried hard to get you to marry her. You finally proposed to her at the awards. Um, what made you decide to finally do that? Well, she helped. You know, she's helped me through my whole career, and it's something I've been wanting to do. And I figured, well, this would be a good time to uh, tell everyone, because everyone always asks me when am I going to get married. So now everybody knows, including her. Okay, so a double victory here today for Mike Stewart and Lisa Miller, soon to be <laughs> husband and wife. A great job. Congratulations to Mike Stewart. Thanks. Thank you, Jay, and congratulations to Mike Stewart for not only winning the 13th Annual Maury Bodyboard World Championship, but for getting engaged as well. So for Jay Reel, I'm Todd Harris. We'll see you next time right here on ESPN. Hotel accommodations furnished by Outrigger Hotels Hawaii.